The fire and the fury in the streets of Minneapolis overnight as violence broke out during protests over the killing of George Floyd. The latest death of a black American at the hands of police officers has ignited uprisings in at least 30 states. But the vandalism and clashes with riot police have taken the spotlight off the calls for racial justice. There are concerns the destruction is being fueled by instigators taking advantage of the black community's grief and outrage. In Minneapolis, the governor has called in the National Guard. So if you are on the streets tonight, it is very clear you are not with us, you do not share our values, and we will use the full strength of goodness and righteousness to make sure that this ends. We'll take you to Minnesota in a moment, but first, let's take you to Washington, D.C., where the protests are picking up in the U.S. Capitol. Jackson, we understand police have had to use tear gas. That's good. I have water. I have water. Uh, Robin, they deployed pepper spray actually a short time ago. Uh, there's essentially been a tense back and forth here with the crowd. So here's the situation. We are at a park that is across the street from the White House. The park has been barricaded by police, but several times the protesters have breached those temporary barricades. Uh, at some points, some protesters have thrown water bottles and rocks, and police have fired back small volleys of pepper spray at certain times. For the most part, though, these protests are remaining peaceful. And in fact, there are several protest groups that have been moving throughout Washington, Washington throughout the day today. Uh, a little bit earlier this afternoon, kind of gives you a flavor of what's going on. We saw protesters surround a Washington, D.C. police car. The officer left. There was no real confrontation. But then uh, we saw people start to, to move into the park. And that's really what touched off this confrontation. Uh, we're seeing large police movements throughout the city this evening at this point. And really the question is, where does this go from here? And I think, Robin, that's the question that uh, is being faced by many cities in America tonight. This is a very volatile time in the U.S. And the White House is in lockdown with the president inside. What has his response been? In fact, the president just returned to the White House uh, just in the past 10 minutes. He's been in Florida all day for the space launch. Uh, there has sort of been a, a tense messaging coming from the president. At one point today over Twitter, he actually suggested that his supporters, the MAGA crowd, Make America Great Again, should perhaps hold a counter protest. And Robin, you know that something like that would not go well. That would lead to further clashes. That counter protest did not materialize. The president, though, has also been in a showdown with local officials here in Washington, D.C., suggesting that D.C.'s mayor is doing nothing to keep the White House or city streets safe, and that's simply not true. Uh, D.C.'s police are out here along with the Secret Service. Are you getting a sense that Secret Service is confronting the protesters or vice versa like it was last night? They uh, are doing their best, I think, to hold the line. When you look in the park here, uh, those are parks, police, and Secret Service. And essentially what they do is they're standing in formation in riot gear. They will give verbal warnings when they want people to move back, which they did several times before they cleared the park. Uh, they seem content maintaining the perimeter uh, here outside the park. But we have seen Secret Service step up their presence throughout the day as well. They've taken up positions on top of several of the guard houses inside the White House compound so that they can have a better view of uh, the situation out here as it unfolds. Jackson Prasco in Washington. These protests are not just centered in Minneapolis and Washington. Demonstrations and riots are sweeping across the U.S. Jennifer Johnson reports. Minneapolis was ablaze again overnight as rage and riots overtook dozens of American cities. It's been hell. It's been a war zone. Protesters demanding justice after the police involved death of George Floyd. The now fired officer, Derek Chauvin, showed on video kneeling on Floyd's neck for almost nine minutes, has been charged with third degree murder and second degree manslaughter, charges not harsh enough to quell this fury. Minnesota's governor calls Floyd's death a murder, but he is pleading for calm. Last night is a mockery of pretending this is about George Floyd's death because our communities of color and our indigenous communities were out front fighting hand in hand to save businesses that took generations to build. Floyd's family is demanding a second independent autopsy after the county's medical examiner pointed to underlying health issues, not strangulation, as the cause of death. U.S. President Donald Trump says the federal government is ready to back up the state National Guards. We have our military ready, willing and able if they ever want to call our military. But we can have troops on the ground very quickly. Authorities have not charged the three other officers at the scene, although all were fired, further fueling charges of racism, not only in Minneapolis, but across the country. People of color and black people especially are not treated equal. There is so much racism in this country. No justice, no peace. Rioters also took to the streets in dozens of other cities. 
In Atlanta, landmarks including the CNN Center and the College Football Hall of Fame were attacked. This is not a protest. This is not in the spirit of Martin Luther King Jr. This is chaos. A federal protection officer was shot and killed, another injured, after shots rang out amid protests in Oakland, California. The County Justice Center set on fire in Portland, Oregon. <laughs> And an angry mob tried to get through a barrier near the White House, which had to be put on lockdown. Nighttime curfews are in place but are being ignored, looters outnumbering law enforcement. Even some celebrities are weighing in, telling protesters to find another way. It is time to beat up prosecutors you don't like at the voting booth. It is time to hold mayoral offices accountable. Volunteers are now spending their weekend cleaning up the destruction, but protesters promise another night of unrest, unable to control their anger after another restrained black man died pleading for his life. Jennifer Johnson, Global News, Washington.